on this beautiful Sunday morning and welcome back Beverly. She is uh, still continues to recover her energy and strength and all but it is wonderful to have you back and continue prayers so with you. Uh, we would like to begin as, as you know uh, with the choral intro. Uh, you are my all in all. This is the second week of uh, singing this piece so please remain seated and if you know the tune please I just uh, ask you to Sing a little louder so <coughs> others might be able to follow you. join me in the call to worship is found on your screens. God calls us with a blessing. Our help is in God. God calls with a promise. Our help is in God. God calls through our questions. Our help is in God. God calls through the Spirit. Our help is in God. And if you'll pray the opening prayer with me. God of forgiveness and new beginnings. You feed our hearts with compassion and nourish our souls with the bread of heaven. As Jesus fed the hungry crowds, knowing that they needed both physical bread and the bread of heaven, fill us with your generous spirit and make us one with Christ. Amen. 
And our opening hymn this morning is Jesus, Keep Me Near the Cross. The words are found on your screen. If you're worshiping with us in the sanctuary this morning, you can also find it in the United Methodist Hymnal on page 301. And if you will stand as able as we sing this morning, please. again good morning to each and all of you it is always a blessing for all God's people of all walks of life are able to gather together and today I have a privilege of Reverend Charles sitting next to me he's going to bring us a special message so thank you Reverend Charles that reminds me about when I was an associate pastor at uh, Good Shepherd in Woodbridge I you always had a on the peripheral vision there's another person with the <laughs> the alb and uh, the stove, so that kind of reminds me of that time, so that's, and we sang loud to both of us, <laughs> so I mean, you know, former church, so anyway, that kind of, even so, reminds me of the past memories, but anyways, I think it is always a wonderful thing for people from different life experience, ministry experience, different uh, personal experience, bringing the, the word, I think we can all learn from that as well, so. Thank you. Um, before we go to the prayer, I just ask continue prayer for Steve Mills' mother, Mary. She's still in the hospital. You may have gotten the, the email 
uh, along with the newsletter, but the, she had a pneumonia and a kidney failure. And she had been in the hospital since, if I'm not mistaken, like Monday, like early part of last week. And she's about the same, according to Steve, uh, but uh, they had to miss today because the family members are visiting uh, at this time. So I just wanted to remind all of you to pray for the meals. And also, if you don't mind uh, keeping the foster family, uh, us, <laughs> in our prayers as well, uh, Pop, so Jeff's father, Joshua's, my son Joshua's grandfather, passed away unexpectedly Friday. Uh, so we'd be traveling to Carolina tomorrow. Our service would be Tuesday. So please remember all the, the family. He was, didn't know that was coming. So anyway, um, I just appreciate your prayers for us as well. So. So now, uh, may we open our hearts and minds so that, that we might lift up our prayer concerns, but also receive the message that God is speaking to our hearts this morning. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for giving us this new day, this beautiful day. And thank you for giving us this time of worship. When God's people of all walks of life are able to gather together, open our hearts, yearning to hear your words, and grow in faith, and commit our lives once again to your path. And thank you for this Lenten season, preparing our hearts for the coming Easter. May this time truly be a time of self-reflection, in the way that we live each and every day. Are we following your path? Or are we following our own selfish desires or selfish motivations? May this time, this Lenten, season of Lent, reminds us of your amazing love that you died for us. Yet we also know that that's not the end of the story. So may we always trust in the coming resurrection of our Savior. And in the same way that the we might be able to receive and attain the gift of eternal life. Well, now into forever. So we just ask that, that you will be here in our midst. May you send the mysterious power of the Holy Spirit that we might be touched we might be strengthened, we might be comforted, so that we might walk each day of our journey with you, faithfully claiming the kingdom of God and God's grace with all the persons that we encounter. So be in our lives at this very moment, but each day of our life. God, we are here this morning with many prayer requests or concerns, um, either to ourselves or someone that we love and care. So now we'd like to lift those prayer concerns and requests up to you. Lord, hear our prayer. The wise corporate family, the Greek water family. Dean Cunningham. Patty Washer. The Folks family. Lucas and Wyatt. Mama Smith. Mama and her mother. Sherry McCartney. Judy Kinnear. Rick's mother. Oh God, thank you for hearing our prayers, both the ones that were voiced out loud as well as the ones that remain in our hearts this day. And we also, we continue to lift up brothers and sisters near and far who might be going through health challenges, going through treatments or some type of therapy programs. 
and all other persons who are facing life's challenges or struggles. All the persons who are needing clarity and clear direction in their lives. And all the persons who are grieving over the death of their loved ones. And all the persons who are caring for those who are facing health challenges. God, we also lift up all families, children, parents, and caregivers. For the same, in the same way, we continue to lift up our schools, te teachers, students, and staff, that they may together continue to grow to become the people that you have called them to be. May they embrace a safe and nurturing family and homes and school uh, settings that they might develop their gifts and graces so that they might reach out to others in love and in sincere concern for others. God, we also remember all the persons who might be feeling lonely or feeling weary or stressed, tired. May you give the source of strength and may you nurture each and all the persons through your word, and through your daily guidance in our lives. Please continue to be with Greenwood Church and each and all the persons who are part of this community. Whether they are part of this community for 50 years or five days, you see each and all of them to be a precious children of God. So just ask that the may we always come together with one heart and one spirit to worship you, but also committing our lives with one heart and one mind to serve others in any way that we are able. In this way, the love of Christ, the grace of God, might be passed down upon the people in this community and beyond. Please guide us as our church, and as a congregation, and as individuals also. Continue to lift up this community, country, and the world. We especially continue to remember all the persons who are living under the fear of war, fear of earthquake or other natural disasters, and those who are recovering from recent natural disasters all the persons who are living under the violence of any kind, physical, emotional, or spiritual. Just be with them and give them the strength. And please continue to be in our lives. Continuously remind us of your love so that we will live each day confidently, knowing that you will never leave us or forsake us, but journey with us every single day of our lives. So may we always trust in faith and walk boldly in this life's journey. And so now, the people of God, let us come together and pray together the Lord's Prayer, the prayer Jesus taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and glory forever. Amen. Amen. So now I'd like to invite each and all of you to stand if you're able. And may we together say the Apostles' Creed. Words will be on the screen or 881 towards the back of your United Methodist hymnal. So this is like the summary of what we believe as Christians, but as United Methodists. So may we together say what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, <coughs> and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. So now we come to the time in worship when we share special things that are happening in our lives or in the church's life. The first picture that you're seeing, bowling fun. Isn't that awesome? The group, this is a group photo uh, that we took. And uh, there are a few, couple more photos. Yes, uh, please, uh, Reverend Charles. This is uh, the group photo that before, you know, people, some people started to have to leave for other uh, arrangements and whatnot. But anyway, that. All right. All right, so this is some of the action shots. And, uh, well, of course, you know, the boys have to eat. And that's that. And, uh, well, there's a picture of people waiting their turn to bow. And there's a, also a picture of Ed. He had a nice my ball and my shoes. Well, actually, some of the adults, the Reverend Charles had one. Dixie, did you have one too? Yeah. So some people brought the my ball and my shoes and all that thing. So that, I thought that's kind of cool. So. And I've never seen the case before, so that, that's very nice. The shoe goes underneath and the ball and the goat. But anyway, anyway, so that. And then one more picture, slide. All right. So there are more pictures of people having fun. Look at this picture, Reverend Charles. I have never seen you looking that serious. Well, except the, except the time that, of course, you bring the word and being worship. But I was like, oh, I got to take a picture of that. So here's that. But anyway, I just thank you for uh, the meals, family, Steve and uh, Judy, for coordinating this. And anybody else who were there who would like to say anything? Anyone? I got a strike or any, anything that you want to brag for the rest of the crowd? You can't brag. I'm home <laughs> Well, Dixie, don't feel bad. I'm with you. So <laughs> I'm like that too. I'm like a 40-something or something. The score is pretty bad. Callie was, was bowling right next to us, and she was like everybody's personal cheerleader. That was really fun. So, Dad, did you hear that? <laughs> he was talking about Callie. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah. So, so yeah, everybody was great, and I saw that the, uh, you know, intergenerational interaction or something like that, you know, like the older adults will be kind of mentoring the young people, you know, how to bowl and all that. I think that's what counts. Because the church is, you know, made up with young people, but also older people. And uh, older people's wisdom and experience can benefit young people, and young people's energy can benefit the little weary body, you know, and all that. So I think it was great. Thank you for uh, being a part of this. If you missed it this time, maybe we would uh, do that again next time. So please join us. Next picture that you're seeing, uh, I know that the, uh, Margie mentioned uh, Miss Betty, but... Go ahead and uh, speak to us about this. Well, Betty and I have been friends for many years. She was a very good friend of my mom's, and uh, we've kept in touch over the years. And Betty's always, she can't sew, and she always calls me if she needs buttons sewn on something or pants hem. So um, that's how I got in contact with her again when she called me for some more sewing. So we had a really good lunch out at um, Italian Touch Restaurant, and uh, Pastor Keiko joined us for a little while. And then we shopped at uh, TJ Maxx, and we had a wonderful afternoon Thursday. That's wonderful. Thank you. By the way, Miss Betty, uh, you probably may, may or may not know, she's a member of Market Street uh, 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 Partner Church. But uh, she, uh, I had not seen her for some time, so I just wanted to see her as well. And she had a very uh, humorous uh, story about the spaghetti and pizza, so that's why I put the meatball spaghetti uh, 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 artwork on it. But if you like to hear it, maybe Margie can tell you uh, all about it. But I, I thought it was kind of uh, uh, humorous. So thank you for spending that time. The next slide that you're seeing is actually from me. Uh, as you recall, Joshua, my son, uh, plays out, alto sax uh, in the band. And this past week, he had, a, a, I think, the second of the two assessments, I think. All that, that different band from different schools in the county will come, and there's like a Virginia music 
board or something like that number. But anyway, they assess how well your band does kind of thing. So that took place last this past week at Colgan High School, which is in Manassas, huge school. But anyway, anyway, so that's the picture of the, the group team uh, uh, playing. And of course, uh, I got to barely take a picture of him. Actually, they're, they're actually moving on to the sight reading room. So we're not, I was not allowed to get any closer. Uh, but uh, so they did that together in the stage, a few songs, and then they were taken to a separate room for sight reading. So anyway, so I just wanted to share that. Uh, he did well, and uh, I barely made it to that. <laughs> so it was a good 45 minute drive, and then the Russian, and listened to three songs, and that was it. So I'm like, okay. But I'm, you know, being there is all that matters. So. Well, the next picture that you're seeing is the, a friend of mine who recently traveled to Japan. Uh, she's a member of Market Street. But anyway, her friend in Japan sent her this picture. This is an early blooming cherry blossom trees. So uh, I thought, oh, I was going to go ahead and might as well share. It's spring is coming, surely, but the... Yeah, I feel like it's already <laughs> it is spring. But anyway, so that. And uh, hey, if you are keeping track of the, the peak bloom in Washington, D.C., uh, this year's production is sometime between March 22nd through the 25th. Am I the only one who is following that? They usually uh, make an announcement on the 1st of March. So they, I was kind of looking forward to it, and uh, they just came out with that date. So if you haven't been... I mean, I'll recommend you going there. It's so pretty. But be also be ready to fight the traffic and uh, fight the crowd, too. So it's quite a, a big thing for a lot of people. So. Um, the closing slide today is actually a cherry tree that's in the front of my house that's also blooming. Okay. Oh, cool. <laughs> so cool, just cool. a little bit of a preview. But, yeah, sure, they, sure, they sure, are sure. starting yeah. to really bloom. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. All right, so the quick one, a couple of announcements. A Lenten study, uh, The God We Can Know, continues. Uh, Sunday evening at 7 o'clock at Zoom. If you'd like to join that, please let me know. I can send you the, the link. And also Tuesday morning, uh, in-person uh, study group, uh, 10 a.m. Uh, here at Greenwood Church. So whenever you are able to join, uh, even if you don't have a book, there's a DVD accompanied with it. So you might enjoy seeing the scenery, or uh, learning from one another. So please come and join us. Easter flower order uh, is, the deadline is, I know it's early, but today. So there is a, a order form right outside the sanctuary as well as table downstairs. So please uh, pick them up and uh, who do we need to turn into? Okay, Miss Peggy, uh, please. Uh, would you raise your hand, Miss Peggy, so everybody knows which part? If you uh, like to, like, the, this is for the Easter Sunday, but you can donate. I uh, don't donate. But you can purchase those flowers in memory of your loved one or in honor of some special someone in your life. So please uh, take a look at the uh, order form and uh, fill it in and uh, give it to Miss Peggy today, please. So this is a quick reminder, CCAP, our, our local ministry that serves uh, struggling populations, uh, they are trying to do the Easter food basket. So they are looking for a, those items, uh, as you see on the screen. And if you could bring them by Sunday, March the 19th, uh, so that we can bring all the donated items to CCAP before their deadline, which is like the 22nd of March or something like that. So please remember, uh, next time you go grocery shopping, maybe pick up a few uh, canned, um, you know, green beans or uh, those items. So, and bring them to the church, please. So. so if you have any pictures to share, please send them to me directly, or you may use the church's email, umcgreenwood at gmail.com. Thank you very much, everyone. So now, uh, if the, all the children will come for children's message this morning. Good morning. How are you, everyone? Good, good, good. So Mr. Steve is unable to be here today because his mother is sick. 
okay? So uh, I am uh, filling in for him. So today I like to talk about prayer. So what is a prayer, you think, if you have to explain to your friend who doesn't know what prayer might be? Anyone? Any thoughts? Like you talk to Jesus. That's right. You talk to God, right? So you can talk to God by saying, what? What What can you say? Hey, God, are you listening? Yeah, which God does. He, God always listens to us, right? What, what can you say to God other than, hey, God? Anything? You can say thank you to him. Say that again? You can say thank you to him. Yeah, you can say thank you, God, right? For family and friends and food we can eat. Yeah, we can say thank you. What, what else can we say? Man, I was so mean to my friend this last week. What do you say, God? I'm sorry. That's right, CJ. You can say, God, I'm sorry. I'll try to be better. I try to be nicer or kind to my sister or brother or mom or whoever, right? Then you can pray for, uh, you can talk about our own thing, right? Oh, God, I am going to have this big concert or recital or competition. Oh, I'm so nervous. Please help me. It could be about your own thing, right? You have a test tomorrow. Oh, God, please help me so I can do better. But also you can pray for other people, right? Yeah? Like maybe somebody who is sick, somebody who might be sad, right? You can say, God, please be with my friend, blah, 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 or please be with my mom, or, right? So you can, or you can talk about, Pray about the person that you don't even know, that we know that the people are having a hard time. Like the people who are living like when the, in the area there's a war, people are fighting, or the bombs and things are just uh, exploding in our own area that they live in. Or the people who got the big rain and flooded and lost their homes and things like that. People, so we can pray for the people that we don't know also so that God might protect them, God might comfort them, God might remind them that God is still with them, right? So that being said, hey, I wanted to pray for Mr. Steve's mom and, of course, Mr. Steve and his family too, right? Because we know that the, he, she, uh, his mom is sick, and he's, she's still in the hospital. So we will pray for her, but also hold the, for the family, okay? So anyway, uh, this, why, why don't we do this? If anybody would like to say anything, oh, by the way, Mr. Steve's mom, is her name is Mary, Miss Mary, okay? And you, did you want to say something, Mike? No? Okay, so I am going to start so if you, anybody would like to say anything to Mr. Steve or Miss Mary or all the family, uh, please uh, just let me know. Dear God, we thank you for today and thank you for being in our lives. Today, we especially lift up Mr. Steve, who loves us and cares for us so much, and also remember his mom, Miss Mary. We just uh, pray that uh, she will be better soon and she will be stronger each and every day. Anybody would like to add anything to say? No? Anything? All right. So p- please be with all the persons who might be sick, who might be ill, or who might be sad. Please surround all the persons with your love and also be in our lives. And thank you that we are able to talk to you like this all the time. And you always listen to us. So thank you. Please guide us so that we will be your children, loving you and loving all your people all the time. We thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name.
Amen. All right. Thank you, everyone. So a quick reminder that the you're given might be mailed to the church, or you may use the online portal, which you see the link to it. So now, uh, or if you're in the house, there's an offering basket uh, at the back of the sanctuary. Now, please join me as we give back the gifts to the Lord. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks for this day and all the gifts that you give in many different ways. It is time for us to bring those gifts back to you. We pray that the, you would accept our gifts, bless our gifts, and use our gifts for your glory and your glory alone. We thank you for your love and for your guidance in our lives each and every day. And we pray this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. So now as we prepare to hear uh, uh, the word this morning, <coughs> please join me in a prayer for illumination, which you see on the screen. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, you may hear joy what you say to us today. Amen. Well, today's scripture lesson comes from Gospel according to John Chapter 6, verses 51 through 58. I am the bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Keiko, for once again uh, allowing me to... to uh bring the message this morning, it's, it's a privilege to do so. And for almost 30 years, I was privileged to do it, to do so two to, two to three times a Sunday, depending on where I was appointed at a given time. And it was a, it's a rare privilege indeed. I hope that I bring honor to my Lord and my God with the message I bring this morning. I once read about a rabbi who had died in England when he was a young boy, he and his family had been prison, prisoners in a Nazi concentration camp. In the camp, the prisoners were given just barely enough food to eat to survive. Some grain, a bit of stale bread, and a few grams of lard each week. Despite this harsh environment, the family continued to keep the Sabbath, somehow managing to scrounge together a piece of candle and a little bit of food each week they said the Sabbath prayers and blessing. One week, however, there was no candle. When evening came, the father took some of the precious lard and molded it around a bit of string. He then lit his makeshift candle and began to lead his family into customary prayers and rituals. The young son was enraged. He respectfully kept his silence until the prayers were over. Then he confronted his father. How could you do that, he demanded. How could you waste the little lard we have to make a candle? It's the only food we have. His father answered, My son, without food we can live for several days. But without hope we could not survive even one hour in this place. The future rabbi did not then understand the nature of food and faith, the difference between being full and being filled. 
In today's modern American society, we are full of many things. We are full of noise. Seldom are we beyond the reach of radio, television, and other media competing to be the background traffic in our lives. We are likewise full of communications, computers, social media, so-called social media, demanding our attention while we not so slowly lose the ability to simply listen and talk to one another face to face. You see it all the time. You go into a restaurant, if there's two kids at the table, they're texting each other across the table. Now, how ridiculous is that? And we are full of stuff. We are possessed by our many possessions, and I'm as guilty as anybody here when I ask, how much stuff do we really need? What could you live without? And we are certainly full of ourselves, pursuing our own agendas as if we were the only ones who matter. Now, we all naturally long to be full, but sometimes you, ask, you have to ask, full of what? In the sixth chapter of John's Gospel contains several overlapping stories about food. Beginning with the miraculous feeding of the 5,000, our attention is held by the contrast between earthly food, usually bread, and spiritual food. Several times, Jesus plainly tells his listeners, I am the bread of life, living bread which comes down from heaven. First, the crowd dismisses Jesus. How can this Jesus boy who grew up just down the road possibly be anything special? Who does he think he is? We know his mother and his father. Bread come down from heaven indeed. Jesus patiently responds by explaining that his true father is the one who fed his children manna in the wilderness so that they might believe in God and live. God has once again sent bread, living bread that souls might be drawn to him. But the crowds were not drawn to Jesus that day. They did not believe that he had been sent by God to give, them, to give them life. Most of all, they did not understand his strange words. How could he give them his flesh to eat? Frankly, you have to admit, it really sounds rather creepy when you think about it literally. Actually, the eating of food that has been sacrificed was a common practice among the mystery religions of the time. Animals that had been sacrificed to the gods were usually only partially burned. The rest was eaten. Once the animal had been offered to a god, a god was thought to have entered into it, and the worshiper who ate of it was literally filled with God. Such practices were horrific to the Jews, who had strict rules regarding, regarding how to butcher animals and dispose of the blood. The priests who presided over the temple sacrifices were given the leftovers in payment for their services. But this was not the same thing. So what was Jesus talking about? Taken literally, Jesus claimed to be God in the flesh sounded like the very worst kind of blasphemy. Remember... The Jews considered even the name of God to be too holy to ever be spoken aloud. So there was no way that they would touch meat or grain that might in some way have been infused by some God's spirit, pagan or otherwise. It's no wonder then that many of Jesus' followers began to leave his company. Even those who remained complained a few verses later, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? In the next chapter, we learn that the Jews of Capernaum soon began to plot to kill Jesus because of these outrageous teachings. Now, we should not be too hard on the crowd, however, for whenever we read these stories, the crowd is almost always us. In spite of our religious heritage, we ourselves tend to misunderstand, dismiss, and disbelieve many of Jesus' teachings especially the hard ones such as these. Even among those who call themselves Christians, there are many who tend to think of Jesus as a great moral teacher who set a good example. They haven't quite gotten a handle on Jesus, the Christ, our Lord and Savior. They wonder, did he really die on a cross and rise from the dead? Or is that just a myth, a story? 
One of the challenges this passage presents even experienced Christians is to separate John's distinctive twist from the familiarity of the Lord's Supper. Wherever we think, whenever we think of Christ and bread, it is natural for us to think of Holy Communion. But John does not go there, at least not here. His emphasis is on the imagery of Jesus' flesh and blood, the sacrifice itself, not the bread and the wine. John is pointing to a relationship that is far more than just food. He's talking about life itself. John's gospel is about more than the life and teachings of a man called Jesus of Nazareth. John begins at the beginning when Jesus was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus the Christ, flesh and spirit together, is our source of life both physically and spiritually. Son of man and Son of God. Jesus is both the bread of life and the bread of heaven. You cannot have one without the other. When Jesus says that unless we eat of his flesh and drink his blood, we have no life in us, he is not advocating some sort of weird spiritual cannibalism. He's talking about our need to develop a relationship with him. That relationship is the key to this whole chapter. Just as the food we eat nourishes our bodies, the relationships we cherish are to nurture and strengthen and satisfy our spirits. Physically speaking, you are what you eat. If your diet is high in sugar and animal fat, your body will be quite different from someone who eats only fruits and vegetables. Did you know even your body odor is different? Similarly, in much the same way, we become like those whose relationships we value the most. Our parents, our family, our friends, our teachers. But there is no relationship that is more important to who we are than our relationship with Jesus Christ. He is one with God, our Heavenly Father. He is our brother and our most faithful friend and our best teacher. But above all, he is our Lord and Savior. Jesus said, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. The key word is abide. Everything Christians do is intended to bring us to an ever closer relationship with Jesus Christ. We study the scriptures to learn the wisdom of God. We worship together to practice godly relationships and to support each other in godly love. Are our prayers mostly a laundry list of what we want God to do for us Or are we mindful of our need to to seek what God wants for us and to willingly embrace what God wants us to do? In the study book, The God We Can Know, author Rob Fuqua reminds us that the best way to find satisfaction is our faith is to focus more on feeding than on being fed. Too often we, like that young Jewish boy in the World War II concentration camp, are understandably concerned about being fed with being full of our heart's desires. What he began to learn from his father was the necessity of spiritual fullness as can best be found in the concern for and in looking after the true needs of someone else. Jesus said, the one who eats this bread will live forever. Each one of us bears the responsibility of reaching out to the one eternal living Christ and for showing the way to others. In our mutual relationships, we feed on him and on his holy word until we become as one with Christ. So you are what you eat. Jesus is our real food because he is our real life. He is the bread which does not perish Because Christ himself has not perished. He died, rose, and lives again in each of us. We abide in him as he lives in us. His word, his promise, his flesh, and his eternal life. Are you feeding on the bread of heaven? 
You are the bread of life, dear Lord, to me. As thou didst speak the truth, Lord, speak to me. Beyond the sacred page, I seek thee, Lord. My spirit pants for thee, O living word. Amen. One of the particular joys of a ministry for me was always to serve communion. The sharing of the life, the bread of life, in a very physical way with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For those of you in the congregation, you may wish to turn to page 12, but I think most of what you need is actually to be presented on the screen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news that Christ died for us even while we were yet sinners, proving God's great love toward us. Therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name, in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You brought all things into being. You called them good. From the dust of the earth, you formed us into your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. When rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, you bore up the ark on the waters saved Noah and his family, and made covenant with every living creature on earth. When you led your people to Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, you gave us your commandments and made us to be your covenant people. When your people forsook your covenant, your prophet Elijah fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And on your holy mountain, he heard your still, small voice. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. When you gave him to save us from our sin, when your spirit led him into the wilderness, where he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, to prepare for his ministry. When he suffered and died on the cross for our sin, you raised him to life, presented him alive to the apostles during 40 days, and exalted him at your right hand. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Now when your people prepare for the yearly feast of Easter, you lead us to repentance for sin, and the cleansing of our hearts, that during these 40 days of Lent we may be gifted and graced to reaffirm the covenant you made with us through Jesus Christ. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the cup was over, he took the cup gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood, by your spirit. Make us one with Christ, one in ministry with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Body of Christ, broken for us. The cup of Christ, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it. Amen. Now if the ushers would would lead you.
closing hymn may not be a terribly familiar hymn to you, but it is a beautiful melody. I think you'll pick it up very quickly. Become to us the living bread, number 630 in your hymn books, or the words are printed on your screen. and physical body and blood of Christ by grace may his life so live in you that it overflows as you deal with everyone you meet so that others might be, be a bit might see a bit of Jesus in you by his grace O Lord we pray and we go amen
Don't forget to like and subscribe.